Hello, this is a quick one, super quick. No messing around. Not even time for memes, probably not even time for memes. That's how quick this is gonna be. Quick, 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 quick. Today, I'm looking at the data video, digital video switcher SE500. Ooh, this fancy thing. I'm a big uh, data video fanboy um, in a lot of ways. Let's see what data video, uh, Taiwanese company <clears throat> does a lot of stuff that all kind of looks the same. So they've got a ton of uh, switches in this range that will be the SE500 series. And then there's a HD one with HDMI and an SDI one. And they might have different colored plastic, but they look very, very, very similar. Data video seem like they're really good at reusing parts. What is it? Uh, it's a four channel video mixer, as you can see. Oh. All right, <clears throat> what to say? If we take a look around in the back, we can see the usual suspects. A couple of extra little things I will talk about. This is the PAL version, because I'm in Australia. Got two cameras hooked up. Right, that's camera number one. And camera number two. One, two, four channels. I don't have anything on three and four. Also have our background colors. Very classy. The color of the background color button reflects the background color that we're using. Very classy. Got this nice, relatively nice feel T-bar for something that I'm assuming is just a pot down here. We've got mixers, we've got a range of whites. You can see there we've got border colors. Can I? Oh, I can't change a border color mid. Hmm, interesting. You know, look at all these wipes. Wipe city. Ah, amazing. What is uh, quite cool though, that I'm quite a big fan of, is the stuff we've got going across here. I'm plugged into the output, not the preview. I'll show you what the preview looks like. Here's our preview. Pretty nice. It does uh, something that the Videonics mixes did as well, which is as you start a transition, now we can only see the transition that is undertaking. Ah, bit of a bummer, but you know, whatever. Come back to the output. These buttons. Quad literally will give us all four of our sources split across the screen. Straight to the output, it's quite classy. We've also got split. Split is nice and we can select what we want to be on one side or the other side. Okay, split screen. A pretty nice effect you don't see on that many uh, small form mixes. Picture in picture, which is great because we can do a bunch of stuff. Like we've got two different sizes of picture in picture. What's that do? Ah, that brings it off the edge of the screen. We've also got a bunch of positions. Oops, don't lose you. Yeah, I lost you. And freeze, which is exactly what you'd expect it to be. Where you can freeze some video. What does the preview button do? preview button will show us, based on current settings, what a transition will look like before we do it. Which I think is quite cool. So we can actually preview a transition before we take it. Round on the back, locking power adapter, it's quite classy. 12 volts, uh, 1.5 amps. We've got uh, an audio input, an audio output. So one stereo, audio in, audio out. Two mono mics. MIDI control, RS-232 control, and tally out control. So you can issue commands, and they're all listed in the manual, of how to control this. Uh, the MIDI is quite a nice touch because 
the RS232 for this has a lot of circular recursive checksum stuff, so it's not as simple as just like send a dumb ASCII string and have it do something. Uh huh. Our outputs, we get two outputs and one extra output that is S video, and then all the inputs are both S video and um, CV. CVBS, depending how you like to talk it. Let's take this expensive ass cable and let's take the output. Come on, buddy. Take the output right to the input. That's uh, some spicier feedback. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure our friend here is from around 2005. So, you know, a nice vintage, at least that's at least when the um, manual is from. Yeah. It's an interesting feedback. It's not very colorful. Uh, something I am a big fan of though, <clears throat> is doing quad with feedback. You can see here our fourth input because it is taking the output, we get this nicely reflected. And if that was <clears throat> running through to something else that maybe was able to add a little more, you know, impact. I mean, kind of what to say. Uh, it's nice. It's um, relatively small, all things considered. Uh, for inputs, it's very nice to have <clears throat> both S video and composite video inputs. Uh, it's BNC connectors, so you'll need an adapter to use RCA. But you know, old nice pro video gear like this always had that kind of stuff. It's nice that it's got um, uh, a control method that has kept up with the times that you can actually, you know, get an adapter for and actually, you know, kind of speak to rather than a friend idea. I was got tally out. Um, for the four channels. Look up the manual if you ever want to use that. Um, but that will uh, output a voltage depending on which input is set to be live. But yeah, I mean, kind of there we go. Um, I don't really know what else to, don't really know what else to tell you. Yeah, which is not an indictment on, you know, the device or the company that produced it or anything like that. It's more just a matter of, it's more just a matter of saying, yeah, this thing's pretty, pretty cool. No, it doesn't have a bunch of built-in effects or a bunch of other kind of wacky stuff, but it's a good little workhorse analog mixer. <sighs> Data video stuff is really overpriced um, for some reason. Uh, I mean, that's true of a lot of video stuff. I see these selling you know, over 350, like Australian. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but you know, whatever. Uh, this was a quick one. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, do you have one of these? Have you used one of these? Have you used any of the kind of newer ones of these? Um, if you have, let me know. If not, don't let me know. Catch you later. Peace.